right, last bit over here is just a note about the discounts. Okay, what I do want you to make a note of is what I've highlighted. Okay, but you've got the color coding. Okay, that's great. Okay, so obviously selling relates to who? Debtors. That's key. Because you need to keep that relationship in your mind because we need to understand what's happening to the accounts. Okay, so the accounts here will either go up or down depending on whether we're selling or receiving. If I sell, debtors goes up. Okay, so if you've sold something on credit, do you always get the full amount? No. No. Sometimes you might offer a discount, so for example, 5%. So this means I'm trying to incentivize the outstanding debtors to pay. Okay, so, so does your does your company have lots of debtors that are outstanding? Or do all your debtors pay? Mm, we can only have like two that's outstanding. That outstanding. Okay, so those are two debtors that still need to pay. Yeah. How could you incentivize them to pay? Maybe you give them a discount. So if they pay early, then we'll give them a discount. To try and encourage them to rather pay early than to not pay at all. Yes, we have that agreement. Yes, okay. Not Well, when you say suppliers, that means you're paying them. Yes. See, that's a different discount. Okay, so here we're looking at the discount that you give yes, your know. suppliers. Yes, I know, but yes. I just, yeah. Okay, is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you can mention what you mentioned here, because now what discount do I have? Discount? Receive. Receive, because you're dealing with who? The creditors. Okay, so again, the key is this. Buying creditors. Always, always, always. Remember, they're linked. When I have a debtor, I'm thinking credit sales. When I have a creditor, I'm thinking credit purchases. Okay, so a discount that's going to be received will arise when I do what? When I pay early. Exactly. Okay, when you pay your creditor early, they might give you a discount. And if that's the case, That'll be seen as income. Okay, so discount received income, discount allowed expense. Okay, there are two different discounts. Can I have a discount allowed for a creditor? No. No. Okay, because then that changes the relationship. Yeah. Discount allowed will only arise with the debtor. Yes. Discount received will only arise with the creditor. You could have one business that could be your debtor and your creditor if you're doing um, transactions in both directions. Okay, meaning you're selling to them, but you're also buying from them. Okay, okay that's possible. Does that exist in your business? Yes, it does. Okay, so there's a debtor that you sell to, and you're also buying from them. Yes. Okay, so then there you'll have two. You'll have two separate accounts: one for debtors, one for creditors, but it's the same business. Okay, okay and I think that was it. Oh, the last bit is just the VAT, and then we've covered this chapter. Do you remember your VAT? You should. Your VAT was pretty good when you did 1501. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you it's describe. I'm still okay. Okay, so you describe what's happening here. Why is this the summary that I need to take away? Okay, so we know what it is. So this summarizes almost everything. So describe what you have here. What do you mean? What VAT do I have when I have a purchase? No, a purchase. Oh, it's sorry. Ooh. Purchase is input that, sorry. Okay. All right, so notice the diagram gives you everything. All right, so see, this is what you should picture when you think that. Okay, picture the business, goods coming in or going out. Okay, so now we, we're applying it. If I have a credit purchase, will I have that? Which VAT? Input VAT. Correct. Okay, because you're purchasing, so the VAT is coming in in the form of an asset because you get to claim it. Yes. Okay. If I'm selling goods, every good that I sell that has 14% VAT, are you entitled to it? No. Okay, so you guys are probably registered for VAT. Yes. Okay, so every time you sell something, there'll be 14%. Who do you pay that to? Correct. So that's a liability. Okay, so output value is a liability because it's not yours, it's someone else's. Okay. 
and then we need to compare the two. So if the liability is bigger than the asset, will I have a refund or a liability? Say again, if the, li if the liability is bigger than the asset, meaning I've got more input than output, will I have a liability or a refund? Liability. Exactly. Okay, because that means you're going to pay SARS more than you claimed. Okay. Businesses that have a refund will be businesses that have more input than output, and then you'll have a refund. Right? And those are normally like your fruit and vegetable type businesses, because fruit and vegetables are zero rated, meaning when you sell fruit and vegetables, you don't sell fruit and vegetables with 14% VAT. But are you still paying electricity? Yes. Are you still paying rent? Yes. Are you still paying stationery? Yes, and all of those things have VAT. VAT. So you can claim that VAT, but you just can't pay anything over to SARS. Okay, so those types of businesses will actually get a refund. And for the VAT, I thought it was like only bread. Bread milk. also, milk also, yeah. No Basic food items. Vegetables. Basic food items. Okay, so yeah, fruit and vegetables don't have. Well, let me say, not all fruit and vegetables, obviously, um, the most important ones, the basic, like, remember, SARS has, like, a list, and on the list, they have all the items that are zero rated, all the items that are exempt, all the items that are, well, they, they wouldn't uh, specify the standard rated, because standard rated would be anything that isn't on those other two lists. Okay, so, if an item is on the zero rated list, you don't pay any VAT, it's zero percent. If something is on the exempt list, then you won't have any VAT at all. Okay, so it all depends. Yeah, but fruit and vegetables generally don't have VAT. So more often than not, I, I really, I can't think of an item of fruit or vegetables that would have VAT. I would have to check, like, till slips the next time I buy I'm fruit and vegetables. I'm actually check my food and my... Check it. You'll see a little asterisk or no asterisk. Okay, because remember they've got like a, a key. So the ones that are zero rated, there's normally like a symbol or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe bring bring a bring a sample. Um, bring your well, it's month end, so you probably do grocery shopping, I guess. Yeah. So if you do, uh, bring your till slip, and then we can actually see on the slip which ones have the VAT, which ones don't have the VAT. Oh, okay. Right, just as out of interest. <laughs> okay.